Welcome back to The Coding Circus. Today we are going to look at an assignment where we're going to create two avatars, um, one that's controlled by the player and one that is controlled by the computer uh, that we often um, call NPCs or um, non-player um, character, NPC, non-player character. And the non-player character is just going to follow a path and when we run into the non-player character we're going to have the non-player character act out a scene and say something. So there's a lot going on here. The first thing we're going to do is do our normal code that we bring in, our imports. Pull those in. Whoops, too much. Hang on. Just this. There we go. And now we need to add in some of our characters. So let's go on and add in our world. And we're going to add in two avatars. One is going to take the place of the avatar we're going to control. So we're adding in our world, putting in gravity this time. And our first avatar is going to be the avatar. It's going to be the female avatar. We're going to control ourselves with the keyboard. And then our non-player character that we're going to add in, which is going to be the male character. I'm going to add in something a little bit different. I'm going to add in the collision mesh for both of them so they know when they walk into each other. Uh, one thing that you can add in here which does affect the gravity sometimes is the density of the collision mesh. You can make that higher, and that has a different effect as different things collide into each other. I'm going to leave the density at 10. I definitely want to enable the collision notify event for our NPC. And then the next thing I'm going to do is, well, let's just run that and see what we got. Make sure everything works. There's our two characters just sitting in the world there. OK. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is add in a path for my NPC. Now, we're going to do this with that for loop we had talked about before, the enumerated for loop. So I'm setting up my path for my NPC, viz.addAnimation, my control positions that I have in here, and then I use my little for loop, and this time we're just putting in the path, so I don't need to put in any markers. So I'm just saying uh, path.npc.addControlPoint point and keeping count of my different control points and adding my position using the enumerate method for my special for loop there. Okay, I want to set some information about the way the NPC walks the path and set up my link. So I want my loop mode to be circular. I want him to walk in a circle. And I want it to compute the tangent so he faces the right direction when he's walking. I want it to be nice and smooth, so I'm setting up that cubic uh, visor translation mode. And then I'm setting up my link between my NPC path and my NPC. Finally, I'm going to set the state for my NPC to be the walking state. That's state 2 for this NPC. Otherwise, he's going to look like he's just kind of like flying around the screen, which is OK but I want him to actually look like he's walking. I'm going to set the speed at which he goes around the path to 0.5 because that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to have him um, play that action. So let's run this. And it looks like there he is wandering around our room following his path from point to point, just like we set up paths before, but this time we just set up the state so it actually looks like he's walking, which is great. That's what we wanted. Okay, next. I want to kind of blow up our word a little bit here, make this box blown up a little bit. So before, when we did our left wall and our right wall, we named those just like we named our floor. And what I can do is I can actually move their position. So for the purposes of my program, I want to change the position of the walls 
I'm going to use the ABS local again, so that way I know it's local to its current position. So I'm just going to kind of blow out the wall, move everything around, have my collide mesh meshes on the wall. So when I do that, I can see that my walls are going to blow up a little bit. See, making a lot more space for things to move around. I kind of think that looks interesting. Okay, so the view is a little weird. My avatar that I'm controlling, um, the view needs to be changed because right now I'm looking head on at the avatar that I'm controlling, which is a little bit weird. So I can set up this thing called a transport node and I'm gonna use the main transport, which is the camera in our Vizard Connect. So I'm gonna set up a variable called transport node and it's gonna get the main character, the main camera, and I'm gonna link the camera to the avatar. So that way when the avatar moves, the camera's gonna move with the avatar, which I think is kinda cool. And then I also wanna move the camera a little bit So I'm going to do something called view link dot pre trans, which is um, transporting the camera. So this is going to move the camera. The first one, the T one is going to move the camera. And then the Euler link, the view link dot pre Euler is going to change the angle. So this is the, the link that we created. And now I'm setting up the relationship between the view of the camera and the view of the avatar. So right now when I do the link, the camera and the avatar are one. The camera's on top of the avatar. But I wanna move that camera so it's just off over the avatar's shoulder and I wanna angle it down a little bit. So when I do that, watch the camera view now. And we can see it's behind the avatar and slightly looking down on top of the avatar. And now when we do write the code to move the avatar, the camera will follow along behind the avatar. So now we got our world set up. Let's talk about how to move the avatar. So I created a task. Let me get my task here. It has actually a lot of steps in it. But once you see the first step, it'll, it'll make a lot of sense. I'm gonna add it in um, right at the top here after we import our world and our characters. There we go. Okay. So it's gonna be a while true task. It's gonna constantly loop through and I'm gonna get the key that was pressed, just like we saw before. Only this time, all I'm gonna do is change the position of the character. Now, to do that, I need to get the avatar's current position and change it by one and store it in a new position. So that's what this does. It says E, get the thing that we are sending to it, which is gonna be the avatar change its position in uh, the forward direction, or actually the right direction, I should say, minus one, and then keep all the other positions the same. Then I'm gonna set up an action called viz.walkto. Now the reason why I wanna use the walkto method as opposed to the moveTo method is that it, it gives a smoother action to my character and it actually walks to that position no matter where it is, so it'll turn, and it'll go to that position. So I want it to actually be able to walk and turn to that position, and it'll all be fluid. And it includes the animation that goes with it. So it includes the moving feet and all those kinds of things. So I don't have to add all that extra in. By using the walk to method, it automatically includes all of the turning and includes all of the animation. However, the problem with the walk to method is I can't use the local modifier. So I have to do this whole thing where I get the current position and then change the current position. So I do one for the D key, I do one for the A key, 
I do one for the S key, the W key, the E key, the Q key, the X key, um, and then the space bar. I thought it'd be fun to make a jump. So I made a jump. Um, and it just goes straight up in the air, thus having the gravity. So this is really just a repeat, and it's just an if then else statement, making sure which key is pressed. And I'm going to put this in a, a box for you, so to speak, for you to use as a starting point for your avatars. You know, you can change the avatar, but at least you have all the code here to do the motion. So now when I run it, I can see I can make my avatar. Oh, I forgot to add the task. My fault. Let me go all the way to the bottom. So I created the task, but I actually have to schedule the task. So I'm going to put this as the last thing that we do. And schedule the task, move walk, and I'm going to send it the avatar because it's the avatar that I want to move walk. And now I can walk my avatar around. And notice the camera will follow my avatar on the screen. And I also kind of created these angle walks, moving at a 45 degree angle. And my character can walk around the screen. And the camera follows her. So that's fantastic. That's what I wanted to have happen. Now, I want to create what happens if there's an interaction between the avatar and my non-player character. So we're going to create another task for it to handle that. And it's going to look complicated, but when we look at it, it's going to be mostly an animation task. So I add this after my move walk. There we go. See, there's a lot going on here. Again, I'm going to do a while loop, and I'm going to wait for an event to happen. I'm going to wait for a collision. So when that collision happens between the two objects, then I'm going to do all this stuff. So it, it's that idea of using the callback um, for the collision event. And if that collision event occurs, then I'm going to make sure I do some things. And remember, we turned on the Collide Notify for the NPC. I did not turn on the Collide Notify for the avatar. I only want this on the NPC. So I want to make sure the collision event is only going to occur on the NPC, so I only turned it on for the NPC. If I turned it on for the avatar, then anytime the avatar ran into something, it would run this NPC act. Um, method, which I don't want it to happen. I only want it to happen when it runs into the NPC. So the avatar doesn't know when anything runs into it. Only the NPC knows when something runs into it. And there's other ways of doing it, but I thought this was the best. So the first thing I'm going to do is get um, the NPC's last known position. And I'm going to disable the link for now. That's kind of like a pause in the link. So my avatar, my NPC is going to stop that circular path. And then I'm also going to get my avatar's position. And I want to move my avatar backwards and slightly over from the NPC so they don't look like they're right on top of each other. And then I'm going to add an action for my NPC to walk to the avatar. So that way, wherever the, the NPC is on the screen, it's now going to, it stopped its path. It's now going to walk to the avatar's position and wait a half a second. Then I'm going to set up the um, avatar's Euler. I'm going to get the avatar's position in the environment. Create a new Euler, which is a 180 degree spin from the current avatar. And basically assign that to the NPC. So the NPC will now be facing the avatar. So I'm using the add action viz spin to and setting the Euler motion for the NPC to the avatar's Euler but just rotate it 180 degrees, putting another yield in there for a one second wait, just to slow it down. Um, I had them move back a step, but I found I didn't need that, so that's taken off. I'm adding in an animation 
for my NPC to kind of give him my NPC some motion. And I'm going to add in a speech for him to say, just like we did before. And then he's going to wait for seven seconds while he's talking. And then he's going to walk back to the last position he had. Remember, we saved that at the top. And then wait 10 seconds and then re-enable the link. So now he's going to follow the path again. And I'm going to set the NPC state to two, which is basically that walking path again. So basically, it starts to follow the path again. And we need to go ahead and add this task. I'm going to go way down here to the bottom. And schedule that task so it's constantly listening for when the avatar runs into the NPC. So let's run that. And we're going to walk forward. And they should collide at some point. I got to get in the right path. I think I'm in the right path now. And there he goes. He collided. He turns to her. What I have done here is created a lovely little universe for you here. Feel free to walk around and explore. And he walks back away from her. And then he's going to continue his path. And I'm just going to walk her over here out of the way so she doesn't run into him again. And you can see that he has started his path again after the interaction. So this is like a very typical video game kind of thing where a character is walking a world and ends up running into a character. And then that character will say something or do something. I'm going to add in one more motion for my actor. A sideways motion, a slide to the side. And I'm going to assign that to the one and two key. Because I think, you know, a slide to the side would be useful here. I'm going to add that in between the two, keep my motions together. So if they press, again, I'm going to do another listen. I'm going to wait for the key to be pressed. I'm going to set a time for how long the move is going to take. And I'm going to set um, a, when they press 1, I'm going to set the animation to 13, which is that sidestep. But this time I'm going to use the move to action. And the reason I wanted to show you this is because there is no sidestep built in action, like there's a walk to. So you can see that when you do some kind of animation that is not built in, like walk to, you have to add in the animation yourself. So the animation that's going to go with this is 13. That's the slide one direction. And, but this time I can use the local and set a time for how long it's going to take to move, three seconds, and set how it moves using an interpol interpolation. So I really have to set many more things when I'm using the move to action versus the walk to action. Uh, but sometimes it's necessary to be able to do that because there's no built-in action to handle that move. So I'm going to add the animated action to one pool and then move, add the move action to another pool. And the reason why I'm doing that, remember, is so they can happen at the same time. Two different pools will mean the actions will happen at the same time. And then I'm just going to repeat the same thing for the other direction um, and add those actions. Uh, if it's animation um, key to, um, we're going to go um, the other direction. Oh, I did it a little bit differently. The second time, instead of doing it as separate lines, I did it as all one line and viz add uh, act animation as opposed to setting up a variable for act animation. Uh, set it to pull one and then add action. I set the move all the way into this add action and set it to pull two. So I could do it in two statements rather than four just to show you that you can. So now when we run this, oh, I forgot to add the task. Won't work till I add the task. So now I have to add in a task that will allow our avatar to slide. So I'm calling that a move slide versus my move walk. So now my avatar can slide each direction depending on whether I press a one or a two. to slide back the other way. But walk to is nice because it has all the animations already built into it and I don't need to do anything special about it. 
including all of her turns. It's all built in nicely. So that's the difference between the walk, walk to and the move to. The move to, you definitely have to add in the animations yourself. So that is all for the uh, basic instructions for you to create a contact between an avatar and your avatar. I hope you can kind of figure out where we're headed to with this t task. I will see you next time.